Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a whole mixed bag of things because it is the monthly recap for March. So we've got week four of March unstuffing. We've got cashback reward stuffing from uh, reward points or cashback credit cards. We've got um, potential bill consolidation and we've also got the monthly recap to see if we've spent more or if we saved more as well as some accomplishments and goals for next month. So let's just get started because we've got a lot to do today. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to just set off the recap stuff to the side because the first thing we always do is finish up the month of March by doing the last week's unstuffing. So first off, we're going to get some change. We've got 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So today I'm going to be doing $25 in change just because I think we need a lot of fives so I don't get too many ones. Okay, um, let's do a reverse order. Um, let's start with husband's binder. We're going to do business number two, which we need to take out $10. So here we go. Please give us a 10. Yes, $10. We don't count when we unstuff, so at least what's not going to be in the envelope because we will do that when we stuff it next week. And this one, I'm actually getting this out pretty on time. Today is April 1st, um, and I'm hoping to get the first weeks of April's unstuffing out on around the 3rd or the 4th. So wish me luck. Okay, next up. Oh, wait a second. Going too fast. We have to unstuff my husband's envelope as well. So personal is going to take out $19, and this is for food. So $20, get $1 back. And he will be left with that. Okay. There we go. And I apologize. I think the last video or two, I was kind of off frame almost. Um, it's always awkward for me to kind of tell how far I am. So I'm going to make more of an effort to get further up in the screen. Um, okay. Sinking funds. So this one is going to be gas. Um, I think I am going to increase my savings for gas because we seem to go through it a lot. Um, and I, we have a couple of trips coming up back to the bed and breakfast. So gas is going to take out $91. So I'm going to do 101 and give myself $10 change back. This is also going to get swept, so I'm going to put it off to the side. Um, groceries is going to take out $92. So let's see, same thing. I could do... Guess I'll just do 100 and I'll take back $8. One, two. There we go. This will also get swept. Milk delivery is fully getting swept. Eating out is going to do $42. So we've got 50, which means we need $8 back. One, two, and three. Getting swept. Um, the last category to unstuff would be gifts, and this is going to be $57, so 50, uh, 60, get $3 back, one, two, and three, and this was for a gift for my nephew. We ended up getting him a little mini fridge because he is 15 and he is starting to do, you know, care about his skincare, so he's got a couple skincare products. He does have some you know, teenage acne and stuff. And then I also thought it might be fun for him to store like a beverage or two. So it fits, you know, a couple beverages and then there's a shelf that you can adjust and can put some of his skincare products in there. So that is it for unstuffing these. And then I'm also gonna grab the kids binder, kids envelope, because I do sweep that as my final category. Okay, let's see. Kids is going to take out everything except the gift card. So I'm going to take out 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 95. Wow, that's great. Okay, so let's count up and see how much we're sweeping. Okay. 
Okay, we've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 205, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So $236 um, is getting swept. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, $236 is getting swept, so that will be put towards challenges next month, as well as um, this $11 is going to go into the $1 challenge next month. So pull that off to the side. All right, and then we should have $311 here that will go back to the bank. You know, I honestly thought maybe that sweep should have had one more dollar, so we'll see if this says $312. Uh, 102, 250, 70, 93, 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37. Is that accurate? That can't be accurate. 100, 250, 70. Oh, I have to take out the, what did I do? 25. No wonder that didn't look right. Okay. So 100, 250, 70, 90, 310, 20, 310, 310, 320, 1, and 2. So I feel like we're actually... $11 extra because I think we should only have 311 Okay, so first off, I know $1 should get swept. And then I guess we just do $10 extra to the bank. Because I did 15 plus another 10. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll go back in the video and look. If you see where I made the mistake, let me know. But I guess I'll catch it in editing. So... 250, 70, 90, 300. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. 250, 70, 90, 300, 10, 11. Perfect. All right, so no mistake, just mistake in counting. So this will go back to the bank. And I apologize if you hear my son crying in the background. I think it's time for lunch. And sometimes at mealtimes, my kids just go feral. And it's like they know they're about to eat, and I think that maybe ramps up their anxiety and so then therefore they get more crazy about it I don't know but if you hear crying please know my parents are with him making him lunch um he is not uh outside the door crying okay so that is it for the expense so next let's do the cash back reward stuffing let me switch over my screens so today for cash back rewards I have $66 from um, my cash back Quicksilver card by Capital One. And I have $31 from You Promise. So You Promise is another online uh, website where if you buy things online and you filter it through the You Promise website, um, it will give you cash back. And traditionally, I think You Promise started off with student loans um, because before it had to be linked to a student loan that qualified and they would pay that back directly. But now it's kind of loosened up where they actually just give you the cash back. So it deposits into my bank. Um, so that gives us a total of $97. So 50, 70, 95, 6, and 7. Which will go into cash back rewards. And we don't count this right now. Um, I just do this for the whole year and then I count it at the end. I'm not sure what we'll put this towards. Let me know. Maybe a trip? Maybe a Louis Vuitton purse? I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> um, okay. So then that brings us to... Hmm. Should we do a little bit of cash consolidation? Or should I just go into... You know what? Maybe we'll just go straight into monthly recap. And maybe we'll do cash consolidation next week because I don't have... Um, an expense stuffing for the first week of uh, April and so it's a little shorter video and this one gets really long so sorry for the teaser but we'll do cash condensing next week or really next couple days the next video um, when I do stuff all of my envelopes for the first week of April and then that way we kind of know too if um, anything needs to be consolidated okay so March let me just pause and zoom in so people can see this a little bit better there we go. Let me see if I do an angle. I always angle when I write. So yeah, I think you guys can still see. Okay, so what I like to do here is I like to say everything that I stuffed, everything that I spent, and whether I have a gain or loss here. So we're going to kind of start it off and then cut it to the final result so you don't have to wait for me writing. 
Okay, so first week is 1,572. And I'll just do one week to illustrate. The first week's spending was 635. And as you can quickly see, that means that I had a gain of $937. So I saved $1,500, I spent $600, and overall I saved more than I spent, right? So that's the little gain. I'm going to fill out the rest of this chart, and then we'll come back and do a quick recap. Okay, so we're back. So I filled in all the weeks that I stuffed, what I did for a total of $8,023. Now remember, this does include anything that I stuff from automatic transfers for 401k, for HSA accounts, and for my kids' 529 plans. Um, spend is everything that I spent on, usually on credit cards, but sometimes with cash, um, that I needed to take money out of the envelopes and bring back to the bank. So I use mostly cards. Um, I do that so that I get cash back rewards and because it's much more convenient, but I still do a weekly cash stuffing so that I can track um, how much I'm spending and in kind of real time. So uh, when I tried to do it just at the end of the month with credit cards, I found that I had no idea in the middle of the month how much I had left and was overspending. So that's just how I do it. I know a lot of people just do a strict um, one in, one out type of thing with cash. They just try to pay for everything with cash. But for me and my lifestyle, that doesn't quite work out for me. Um, here you can see in the first week, we had a gain of 937 as we already walked through. Week number two, we had a loss of 263. So the parentheses means a loss. Um, I stuffed just over $2,500, but I spent more than $2,700, just over, under $2,800. And that was because I had a lot of medical bills that I ended up paying. So not great. I don't love that I was this week uh, at a loss, but at the same time, I know that overall, that's why I do these monthly recaps is that at the end of the month, I still have a gain. So week three, 1,500, just under 1,000. So we had a surplus of 503 that we saved. And week number four, a very large one, 2,400 we uh, saved, 311 we spent, and a surplus of just over 2,000. So as you can see, just over 8,000 we, we saved. I saved over the entire month. I spent um, 4,700, which is pretty high for me. Normally it's around, I'd say 3,500. And then we gained a total of 3,283. So just to kind of compare, we can see in February, we saved roughly the same. We spent far less, $2,000 less. And so therefore our monthly gain loss for February reflects that 2,000 gain. So not too bad. Um, the other thing that I like is that I can explain why I spent so much. It's not like, oh, I just ate out more and was buying more beauty products and you know had some I don't even know, like more discretionary spending. It was specific to healthcare bills. Um, same thing I would treat if I had some major car repairs or household repairs. Like I know why we had to do it. It was a necessity. It wasn't something that was just, you know, kind of more frivolous. Okay. If you have any questions about how I set that up or what I do uh, regarding the week's spending and stuffing and the gain loss, please uh, just add a comment below. I love answering. This is kind of the more boring education part, but this is what I feel like helps people the most in their own financial journeys. Um, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I respond to every single comment. Um, I love interacting with you guys and I really am passionate about this educational part. Okay, so investments. I have basically four categories of investments at this time. I have 401ks, I have a health savings account, which requires a high deductible medical plan through my employer. I do a 529 savings plan for my three sons. Um, and taxable, I have this old taxable account. I've mentioned it before. It only has one private stock in there right now. I am not focusing on adding to this right now other than I'm looking into AI stocks. Um, but right now I'm really just focusing on the 401k, the HSA, the 529, as well as just making sure that I have a good grasp on my budget every single month. And then there's a couple other things in the background um, that I'm spending, you know, paying down faster, like you know, mortgage things or, you know, things with the bed and breakfast business or, you know, doing some remodeling, that kind of stuff. So it's not all reflected here. Um, okay, so I started off. So these numbers um, at the start of the month is basically the old numbers from February. So as you'll see, I just took a straight up copy these numbers from the end of February straight into the beginning of March. 
Um, contributions. So I listed these contributions and made a mistake with my HSA because that month was a little bit higher for my employer adding to it. But 633 is the normal amount. These numbers usually don't change very much because they are automatic contributions. Um, and then I'm going to go in and fill in the end and the gain loss. And the gain loss for investments is basically what the end minus the beginning minus the contribution because what I'm trying to measure here is not how much overall it increased. I want to know exactly how much the market, right? The market increased, not including my contribution. So my contribution and start are added together and they are subtracted from the total amount at the end of the month. All right, so we'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So first off, I made a little mistake, which I always do with these charts, but basically, here's my starting, here's my contributions, which are already there. I just totaled them at the end. So 263,749 is the same amount as that we had at the end of February. Total contributions for this month is just under $3,000. So it's my 401k plus my HSA and my 529s. And then the ending amount is 272,506. So when we calculate the gain loss, you're going to see right here in the 401k, we went from 227 to 235, so roughly a gain of $8,000, but we have to subtract the contribution so that I can get the true gain in terms of what the market is giving me. So the market, because it's been strong so far, has given me $6,000 in what I would quote free money, right? It's not money that I actually contributed, it is money that is being gained by the stock market doing the stock market thing. Um, same thing with HSA. We started at just 20,400 under, um, added 633. So that should have brought us about to 221 or 21,000. And as you can see, there was a gain of $227. Same thing with 529, a gain of 167 after contributing 150. And as taxable, I don't continue to contribute to it right now, but it actually went down. So the stock market for my private stock and for my 401k seem to do opposite. When my stock market 401k goes up, I feel like my private stock goes down and vice versa. Um, the other thing that I would say for this um, taxable account is it is full of Apple stock. And as of right now, Apple was just um, in the news for the DOJ, um, you know, bringing a lawsuit against them. So essentially that anything like that can definitely impact your stocks, depending on what kind of stocks you have. Um, geopolitical, you know, actions, like if there's some kind of, you know, competition in China or if they have to move some of their manufacturing factories, that's all going to play a part in, you know, Apple specifically, you know, the stock for Apple. Um, once again, though, we want to be very calm and cool and tortoise collect uh, investors. We don't want to be scared by the fact that this dipped $500 because you know what? In two months, it could go back up to $500. So one of the things that you want to make sure you do, if you do get into stock investing, and this is just my personal advice and it is not financial advice, but you need to go into it thinking that if you lose the money, it is money you can afford to lose. And secondly, for the most part, you just want to buy and hold. If you're looking to do a GameStop or a Chipotle type stock where you buy and then you get rid of it really quickly, you know, some people have success with that. I think most people do not. So if that is a strategy you are looking for, I am never going to give advice on that or personal uh, information about that kind of stuff because that's not something that I believe works for most people. Um, there's plenty of channels that will promise you that. But for this channel, I very much follow um, the financial influencer uh, Tortoise. Uh, the Tortoise, I'll put it in the link. I forget exactly what he's called, Tortoise Planner or something like that. But um, he takes the same approach of slow and steady wins the race. Um, he invests in index funds. And, you know, I just find him to be very, very logical and in line with what my investing philosophy is. So there's a lot of information out there. Um, I encourage everybody to go find their own, but be very careful and make sure you try to get as much um, balanced information as possible. And if you're going to really go full-fledged into it, consult a financial advisor who has a fiduciary duty. Um, so fiduciary duty, I'll put it in the description, basically means their duty is to look out for your best interest, their client's best interest. Their duty is not to look out for their own. So um, I'm a lawyer. Um, 
a former lawyer, I guess you'd say, because I don't practice law. But basically, a lawyer has a fiduciary duty for their client. They have to do what's best for their client. It's not what they're supposed to do for themselves. So um, there's a lot of financial planners and um, people who will manage your money for you. And they do not have a fiduciary duty. They're in it to look to see if they can invest your money and get as many fees from you as possible. And that is not a fiduciary duty. Okay accomplishments this month so I didn't really um scope this out pre-video which I normally do so that one I, I might skip because I don't really remember I guess one of them will be um I started my health journey started health another one that I've been trying to do more and more is I'm trying to really take care of my skin um I am really bad at just like I'm pretty good at washing my face before I go to bed and doing my skincare routine. But in the morning, sometimes if I'm not going to the office, I just kind of roll out of bed and just, I don't know. I don't put a lot of effort into it. So sometimes I don't really wash my face or whatever. Um, so skincare um, is something that I've been trying to really establish. And um, I'm not sure about the third one. We'll see about that. Uh, goals for next month. I am going to try to provide more, um, be more present. I have found in the last month or so that I've really been distracted and like thinking about things when I'm with my kids that I can really compartmentalize and take a break from. And other times, you know, be in the middle of the night and thinking about all the things I need to do the next day. So I'm going to really work on next month trying to be, if I'm doing work, just thinking about work. If I'm doing, um, you know, a video on my lunch break, just thinking about the video. If I'm doing you know, activities with my kids, just, you know, literally putting my phone out of the room and just focusing on my kids. Um, so that's a big one that I really want to do. Another one is just, again, somebody raised this and I love that it resonated with them, but just grace, give myself a little bit more grace. Um, again, I've mentioned many times about, you know, my health journey that I'm, I'm starting on. Um, again, no bad news so far. So thank you so much for your prayers and your wishes and everything like that, sharing your own personal stories. It has just been such a inspiration to me as well as making me feel like I'm definitely not alone um, in, when confronting health issues, but giving myself grace, especially because I think there's going to be surgery in the horizon in the next few months. Um, and so letting myself say, you know, if this isn't perfect, it's my room, I didn't make my bed this morning. I'm not going to beat myself up about it because I'll probably fall into it at lunch anyway to take a quick rest. Um, but yeah, just giving myself grace. And I love hearing how, you know, one of my viewers talked about how, you know, she has a health issue right now and she, you know, will order out for herself on Sundays just to give herself a break from having to think about what am I going to eat for dinner? What am I, you know, making the dinner, cleaning up after dinner, all of that stuff. And I just love that. I love when you guys find little spots that can give yourselves, you know, a little bit of a break or just give yourselves a little extra, you know, care. Um, because a lot of times we just don't. The world is so crazy and busy. If you have a family, if you're single, if you're early in your career, if you're late in your career hustling, like we just have so many pressures. So anytime that you can give yourself a little break, I am all for it. And I have to give myself, you know, take my own advice. And then goal next month, um, I started a new book series. Technically, it's young adult. I was reading the first one because I wanted to give it as a gift to basically my niece. She's actually my husband's cousin's daughter, but we call her my niece. Um, cause I want to make sure that was appropriate for her. Um, cause I don't have daughters and I don't have teenagers. So, you know, I have no idea what's out there anymore in the world of YA, but it was so good. And I actually ended up wanting to read it for myself. So right now I'm, I read the first two books and I'm about to read the third. And I think there's a fourth one out. It's called the inheritance games. I love it. There's, there's a little bit of romance. There's a lot of puzzle mystery. Um, there's, I don't know. I'll, I'll also add it to the description. If you happen to be interested in that kind of, uh, those kind of books, or if you have anybody that, you know, family members that might be interested, um, I would highly uh, recommend it to check it out. All right. So finish book series. All right. And that is it for today. It got pretty rambly at one point. It was also very disorganized because I kind of went in one direction and then swerved and backtracked. But 
Anyways, um, thank you for joining me. I personally, these are usually lower viewership and I totally get that, but I love these monthly recaps, at least for me personally. And I encourage you if you're on a financial journey to do them as well, because it really shows you how far you come and if you're staying on goals. Like I said, this is just a snapshot between last month and next month, but I love seeing that at the end of January, in the beginning of February, my retirement savings was around 250,000. And now at the end of this month, We've gained 20,000, right? I mean, that's just incredible. And I am about to have a big infusion from my employer because they deposit 401k and pension um, in the beginning of April. So for the first video of April, so a couple days, um, we're going to have some placeholders for that. And I'm very excited to share that with you guys. So thank you all. Um, add comments if you have any questions on anything that I've gone over. If you are looking for, you know, how I do things or looking for advice on doing a recap, um, let me know. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.